I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a regular session of the Mayor and Council, City of Bisbee, County of Cochise, State of Arizona, being held on Tuesday, November the 2nd, 2021, starting at 7.01 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Roll call, please. Councilmember Lewis Pollock? Here. Councilmember Joni Giacomino? Here. Councilmember Frank Davis? Here. Mayor Ken Budge? Here. Councilmember Leslie Johns? Here. Councilmember Mal Sweet? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Anacline? Here. City Staff Stephen Pockin, City Manager Ashley Coronado, City Clerk, Carrie Bagley, Finance Director, Matthew Gurney, Interim Public Works Director, Doug Taylor, City Planner, Albert e. Chavez, Police Chief, Jim Richard, Fire Chief, Joe Estes, City Attorney. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, people that are online also. Uh, for tonight, Moment of silence. Um, I would like to uh, read a little statement here. This uh, person had long ties here, uh, two relatives here in Bisbee. And I'd like to offer condolences to the Garcia family for the loss of their son, Miles, who was killed by a distracted driver on Friday evening in Prescott. Miles was a former resident with deep ties to this community. He was a member of the People's Valley Fire District, Wildland Division, as a firefighter and fuels reduction crew. He was an intelligent, good-natured, and funny young man who will be solely missed by all who loved and knew him. Miles was a friend to all. Give a few minutes to, uh, to uh, get some condolences to Miles' family. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight, I actually do have a few proclamations and announcements I'd like to make. Um, first one is a proclamation for one of our old residents that passed three years ago. Um, they're going to have a celebration tomorrow, November 3rd, on Mary Adams' uh, date of death. And so this proclamation is, whereas Mary Adams, who is known as Walking Mary, was a beloved member of the community for 30 years, inspiring Bisbee through her smile, leadership, dedication, and peaceful activism for social justice. And whereas Walking Mary was a teacher, musician, artist, and activist who was committed to leaving the world a better place. Whereas Walking Mary embraced history and community, offering walking tours at Bisbee, working as a docent at the Yuhan House, involving herself in everything from local radio to homeless issues and border troubles. Walking Mary was an accomplished organizer in Yonville <coughs> events, protests, marches, and her actions, in her actions. And whereas on behalf of the city of Bisbee and its residents, we wish to honor Walking Mary Adams for her passion and fairness, decency, and justice. Now, therefore, I can budge Mayor of the City of Bisbee be recognized Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021, as Walking, Walking Mary Adams Day, dated this second day, November 2021. Um, another announcement I have is there will be a public hearing on the redistricting of Cochise County and the supervisors three districts. That is being held Monday for the Bisbee residents, November 8th at 6 p.m. at the Board of Supervisors room. You will also be able to attend online. Uh, they will be posting that, I believe, on Friday, the link to that. So if you're interested in how the uh, redistricting is going to go for us here locally, uh, that would be something you might want to consider. 
And uh, finally, uh, we have a presentation tonight. Um, Bisbee Boat, which of course we always main event is the Bisbee 1000, which just occurred, uh, came to me and said they would like to honor the employees because the employees did a lot this year that, that, that helped put on a really good event. So we bring them forward and uh, make a little presentation to us. And uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Right, thank you very much, Mayor and Council, City Manager. Whoops, well, I probably don't need it, but I'll get back here. Well, okay, okay, great. So, uh, this is beside me, uh, Jacob Stewart. His oh. uncle was John Stewart, who won the first annual BG 1000 uh, 31 years ago. Anyway, so Jacob won this year, so the record, you'll hear from him in a minute. But I just wanted to say that for over 30 years ago, the 501c charity, which I started, it's prospered. No small part, many city employees and board members who have come and gone, leaving behind their care and contributions should be thanked. It is rare to have a confluence of such unpredictable events like COVID and the other many changes that the city has endured in the last few years. COVID actually had a silver lining for our small nonprofit and for other people. It allowed us time to complete a partnership between the city Pioneer Title Agency, Bisbee Vogue, and KG, KNG Construction, and to build an outdoor fitness court, which is state of the art. It's a, literally an outdoor gym, and it's in Higgins Hill Park, and it completed the citizens' over 60 years of endeavor at Higgins Hill Park to create outdoor, from swimming pools to basketball courts to the, the Boucher Bay's contribution to the pickleball court, and now this gym. So we're here tonight to express it really spans 30 years. And in honor of that, um, and in thanks particularly to the mayor and city manager and Lorena and Raul of Public Works, our mayor, we just had a really wonderful year and just out of interest, the Bisbee 1000 in its 31st year is already 70% sold out. So obviously they love Bisbee, we love Bisbee. And we thank all of you for your years of service. And Jacob here is going to show you. We've got 98 bags, maybe, and they're really lovely little bags. And everyone is going to receive one of these absolutely phenomenal medallions that uh, we have designed and perfected over the years. And, and so we hope you and your family will continue to serve and really can't thank everybody enough. Police and fire, of course, are included in this never to be forgotten, but sometimes it's the, the people in the desk jobs and the city employees in general. And so whether you've been here one year or have done the Bisbee 1000 this year for one year, and we had a man who it was his 25th year, a guy from Alpine who comes down every year with his wife. So Jacob, since you're the, you're the winner, <laughs> why don't you just say something? Oh, man. Um, hello, my name's Jacob Rice Stewart. I was born and raised in Bisbee, Arizona. And I would like to thank Cynthia Conroy for putting together such a wonderful event. Um, as a lot of you know, I broke the record this year. It's been one of my main goals for many years now. And I probably wouldn't have done it without my training partner, Eric Meyer, which a lot of you know him. And he's been one of my coaches since I, I was a sophomore in high school. And I put a lot of thanks to him and appreciate everything that he's done for me. And uh, I think I think everything else, just in Bisbee in general, like I love the, I love living here, I love training here, and I think this is going to be a great event for many more years. Well, thank you for that, and that's kind of special. But our number one, the, fat, the winner is a local, and that speaks to, to, to our you know, fortitude. Thank you for that, and uh, we'll get those distributed out to all the employees and Thank mayor you. and council. So, all right, we'll move on now. Uh, next order of business is the call of the public. I have one. Oh, she wants to sign up on number three. So, Donna, I'll wait for you on three. Just checking. <laughs> Keep me on. All right. So, with no other call of the public, uh, we'll move on to accounts payable. I have a motion. I move that we pay accounts payable in the amount of $368,942, subject to availability of funds. 
I second that. I have a motion and a second to pay accounts payable. Do I have anyone with questions about what's on here? No, go ahead. I just have a line here. I just want to know. Uh, it just uh, popped up. Uh, it's uh, 6013 for United uh, Rentals for 367842. Uh, can you give us a page number, please? It's on. Uh, that was the big lift truck I looked in. Oh. 36, it's, uh, it's 613. Uh, let me get, let me go to the line. I think that was not. I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, that was. Um, that's yeah. the only one we've. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don't want to see you. Uh, that was a uh, boom we rented to uh, start fixing the back of the library uh, building because uh, we had some big cracks in the uh, in the back of the building where a lot of the mortar is coming just just flowing right into the building so that was the only way we could get up there and that is still continuing we will have to continue and rent another one so. is it this spent month or for how long uh, uh, no no month? that was only for a week for a week one week you should get around it <laughs> is this budget is yes. this do we have the money for it? okay Okay. Did you also do the flagpole with it or not? No? Uh, we did. Okay. Yes. That's one thing I do remember. You put the light on the flagpole and uh, in the park. All right. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second to approve accounts payable in the amount of three hundred and sixty-eight thousand nine hundred and forty-two dollars. Roll call. Councilmember Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, the approval of the consent agenda. Pretty simple tonight. An appointment to the trans the two appointments to the transit advisory committee. Anybody say any reason to pull anything? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the consent agenda items A and B. I second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as listed. Items A and B. Roll call, please. Councilmember Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Yes, thank you. We move on to old business. Old business. This will be a discussion. And possible approval of ordinance 0 21 15 to rezone APM 102 16 and 102 16 126 and 102 16 079C. These are located at 1008 West Highway 92. This is that. This is. Uh, Asked for by Mr. Todd Conklin. He want to. He would like to have this uh, rezoned from C1 to C4. Uh, we uh, had this on our last agenda, so this is the second reading. Uh, I have one person signed up. Oh, why don't you present it now? <laughs> you did a very good job. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, before you, you have a uh, an application by uh, Todd Conklin for a zone change from C1 to C4. It was approved unanimously by planning and zoning on uh, Thursday, September 16th. Um, I uh, spoke in favor of this at the, at the time and still am. Uh, I believe it's a good use for the property and he's a, uh, a, a good uh, spot for his needs, which are warehouse and storage area. All right, uh, let's hear from uh, Ms. Bulling that signed up. Go ahead. And I'll open it up for discussion on the Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did not speak on this at the first reading. Um, I have done a little inquiry since that time. And um, I do live in the San Jose area. And I'm uh, speaking of this this evening because I am a little concerned as to whether or not this change from C1 to C4, which is 
the highest rating of the industrial commercial use is appropriate and in keeping with the Bisbee charrette that was done in 2008 for the San Jose. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the charrette, um, I just want to read a few of the statements that were made. This charrette was performed um, in May of 2008. Can't even read it. Citizens and stakeholders of Bisbee participated in a week-long intensive planning workshop for the San Jose District. The Charette team received over 300 comments from the public regarding their vision and ideas for this area. And they outlined seven points in this Charette. The first one being sustainability. The second one being community character, identity, and sense of place. Under that principle, it says new development should incorporate design features such as architectural styles, landscaping, beautification, connectivity, demodal access, and recreational amenities. The next principle talks about infrastructure. and community services. <clears throat> the principle being a vision for San Jose should include the provision of community services, a safe and efficient transportation network and adequate infrastructure needed to serve its diverse population. I'm gonna to try to keep this under three minutes, Mayor. The next principle is viability and economic vitality. This is the one that I think specifically speaks to this rezoning request. A healthy, vital, and competitive economy dependent on a diverse workforce and appropriate mix and scale of housing, retail, services, and industry. This comprehend this charrette is found on the website under Comprehensive plans and documents. This is, where's my three minutes? Go ahead. Can I just summarize and wind up? I would really like to hear some comments from my, my ward representatives about their um, questions about tra changing this from C1 to C4. This is a residential area that is across from this particular um, area and I would like to hear from my council members and other council members about the appropriateness of changing this to a C4. Thank you. Thank you, Don. All right, I'll open this up for discussion. Anybody have something you'd like to say? Is Mr. Cullen here? Apparently not. Can I get a, grab a mic? Do I have nothing to say? Oh, okay. I guess I have a question. This city's have, he's requesting to have um, rezoned. What is it? What businesses or what buildings is it directly adjacent to? Uh, I can't remember. I'm sorry. I can't okay. remember what it's directly adjacent to, but it, it is an industrial area right. currently, and there is residential. It, it's what in school we were called good mix, but um, it is. Um, um, the, uh, there is residential, but I believe that uh, there isn't any other place in town in the city limits that, that allows this, or not allows this, but space and um, uh, ingress, egress, uh, like neighbors. Uh, there's a lot of uh, large shopping, as you know, um, other industrial uses. I think that the uh, there is nothing directly abutting that C4, as I remember, but uh, I'm sorry that I've forgotten what the, the neighbors are over this period of time. But um, I do believe that it's necessary for uh, development of this type to be somewhere, and I think that the Highway 92 is a good spot for that. 
and I think it fits the, the criteria that this polling uh, was speaking to. If we, it, you know, it, it's of course open to interpretation, but there are uh, it's um, development along major uh, streets, uh, you know, using like uh, uses in a, in a given area, and I think that that works for this. Yes. Oh, well, I was going to let uh, yeah, um, speak to the neighbors. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. The, the immediate neighbor to the east uh, is a firm that manufactures uh, epoxy uh, coated uh, laminate tops for countertops and tables. Uh, so it's a similar type of use. Uh, the lot immediately to the um, west of, of that property is currently vacant. Um, and then as you go on down the street, you have a mixture of, of uh, convenience stores. Um, there's a large automobile shop that used to be a Chrysler dealership that still stores, fixes, and maintains uh, small and large vehicles, including RVs. Uh, and then you keep going down the street, you've got uh, an apartment complex and at the, at, the, at the end of the street, so to speak, before you hit city limits, it uh, is the American Eagle's house. On the other side of the street, there's a mix of small shops and one survey company, uh, a barber shop. And of course, if you go catty corner from that location, you've got the Safeway Shopping Center uh, and Oni Produce um, Service Center. So, how close is it to the A-frame, is I guess what I'm getting at? Um, or is it the A-frame? Well, the A-frame is along the street. I just happen to, yeah, but okay. that's very much an industrial use because the only use for the A-frame is to process, um, what do you call it, um, people bringing industrial goods in and out of the country. And that's kind of between there and Jimmy Talkhouse. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it, that, that, Correct me if I'm wrong, but that area, nothing has been going on in that area. Nothing. And I mean, at least this is going to be giving you know, some life, or I don't know, I, maybe I'm a face there, but it, it's nice to see some type of going in there. Because it's been fallow for 20 yeah. years at least. If, if, I, if, if I'm correct, and, I may, and it may not be the, the absolutely newest thing, uh, was the conversion of the Pizza House to the American Legion Home. Uh, and then next to that probably um, is the uh, uh, liquor store and gasoline station that's owned and operated by the same family that owns Southeast Arizona Distributor. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, I just like to say that I agree with Mr. Taylor on this. Um, in the last discussion we had, I had asked about other, about the direct neighbor being support. And you said the direct property wasn't, but the property next to that was. Um, I don't have an issue with this. I, the way it, where it's located, pretty much is commercial. And it sets back a bit, so it's not, you know, right there. <coughs> I, 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 I don't have an issue with it at all. There, there is a row, there is a row of trees in front of this property um, that basically is shielding the property from direct view um, and will remain there. And can I? Oh, sure. Go ahead. And then just beyond that, with talking that there is a house. It, I mean, people have been using it as a house, but it wasn't always. That used to be uh, Mrs. Sotelo's daycare. So it was a business then as well mm -hmm. for many, many years. Yes, many, many years. It's a real mixture of uses. Yes. What C4 is kind of for. All right. Any uh, other? Oh, no, go ahead. Just to what Donna was talking about, uh, the, addressing what she had brought up in the codes and what was explained. Uh, there's certain criteria mm -hmm. for, 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 for ingress, for digress, for driving in, for what the community is going to look like. Context. Yeah, yeah, the context. Yeah. My question is, how will this, or what kind of commitment, or uh, the expectation of the uh, the subject, or the person that's wanting to convert this, what, how will it affect the area, uh, the looks, uh, what kind of impact 
it will happen. This will be a question for you. Well, at this time, the application is just for a zone change. The, the, uh, my understanding of his proposal is he'll have a 2,400 square foot um, warehouse, which isn't very large, actually. Um, I don't know at this time, he hasn't come before us with any kind of uh, building plan that I know of, and I haven't spoken to the building. So we'll still have to approve any plans that they... Okay. Well, so the city, that's Yeah. Anything else? One question for Mr. Taylor. Sure. Is the building currently being used for anything? There's not an actual building there. It's just vacant land. Okay. Thank yeah. You. And ha have there been any complaints from residents in the area regarding this issue? Uh, not on this issue. I don't know if in, about other industry in that area. I haven't heard any, but as far as I know, there haven't been any complaints. Thank you. Now, I, you know, I, they would... I, I can't vouch for everybody, but that, from from my standpoint, no one's. All right, I will call for a motion. I move to approve ordinance O twenty one fifteen to rezone APN one zero two sixteen zero seven four one zero two sixteen one twenty six and one zero two six at. 1008 West Highway 92, owned by Mr. Todd Conklin from C1 to C4. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item three as stated. Roll call. Councilmember Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Swede? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Moving on to number four, this is another uh, line of the apple. This is the uh, second approval. This is discussion and possible approval of Ordinance 0-2116. This is authorizing and ratifying the acquisition of certain real property located at 1 Hillcrest Drive. Uh, we know what that is. <laughs> I'll get down this road, but I'll, I'll let Joe have a minute. <laughs> questions I think everybody's familiar with this property and the, the subject of this this ordinance is just to uh, finalize the uh, the authorization and the and documentation of that acquisition it's been a long time coming and yep it's very when it says ratifying it should say satisfying but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> any, any comments besides vice Martin <laughs> say none who wants to make a motion? I move to approve ordinance 0 21 16, authorizing and ratifying the acquisition of a certain real property located at One Hill Christ Drive. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item four as stated. Roll call. Councilmember Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Moving on to new business. This will be item number five. This is a public hearing <coughs> discussion and possible approval of a notice of intent to adopt ordinance 0 21 17 to rezone APN 10362 025, 10362 027. And 10362025D. This is at 100 Clawson Avenue. It's owned currently by Cochin County. We'd like to change the zoning from R1 to CM2. Go ahead. Uh, okay. On, uh, uh, the, Mr. Mayor and Council, um, this is a uh, request by the uh, uh, Cochise County uh, to uh, change the zone. R1 to CM2. Uh, they're in, in a process of selling the building and I uh, would like to uh, have the opportunity to have the most flexible uh, uh, variety of uses possible. Uh, I, uh, on October 18th, this uh, was, uh, there was a uh, 
tie vote to two uh, on this on a motion to uh, uh, pass this. It, the failure meant that it was a no vote by planning and zoning. Um, I'm before you because I am the liaison for that, but also I uh, spoke in favor of this uh, use change. I believe that uh, it's the best use uh, in uh, finding a buyer and serving the city uh, in the best way we can, that this would be the, the best uh, zone designation for this. It opens the uh, field of uh, prospective uh, tenants or owners, but it doesn't uh, you know, go into the scary things like industrial. With that, um, I would like to present Christine McLaughlin uh, with the county, and I think she has a presentation. Actually, just a sure. matter of course, you know, we need to just open the public hearing, hold the public hearing, and close, and then have yep. a presentation just for procedure purposes. I have the public hearing right here. <laughs> so, with that introduction from staff, I will now open a public hearing. I ask for any discussion by members of the public in support of this item. Is there anybody here who'd like to speak in favor? Do we have any correspondence? I think we have a couple. I received one. I think I saw another one. Um, I, think I, had, I saw two letters that came out. Yeah. I received one in favor. Uh, uh, any other one in favor? All right. Now I'll ask for anybody that would be opposed to this change to come forward. Did you say we have any correspondence against? I, I did not receive any. All right. So I see nobody to speak. I will close this public hearing. And I've got the presentation. Go ahead by our county representative, Christine, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me tonight. I prepared a presentation. I believe you guys have hard copies. I'll let you know as um, I turn the slide so you can kind of follow along. So Mayor mentioned, uh, this is a proposed rezoning for Old Disney High School. I'm Christine McLaughlin. I work in planning and zoning in Olympic County. I'm a certified planner and I'm here representing the property owner, which is Cochise County. Next slide. The main building subject to the request is located at 100 Clawson Avenue on parcel 1036. It includes a small adjacent parking lot traversal. It's within Old Bisbee, within the historic preservation overlay. It's a contributing structure to that district. As you can see from the aerial, it's just a few hundred feet from Main Street. Next slide. The building was constructed in 1914 to serve as the first high school for Bisbee. In 1959, a newer, larger high school was opened in the Warren District. Ownership was transferred to the county. Over the past several decades, it has served and continues to serve as government office, library, and parking transfer. The county is in the process of removing and relocating all remaining employees from this location. The county wishes to place the building for sale in the near future. The building is approximately 45,000 square feet in size and over 100 years old. It will require a significant amount of investment, both initially and ongoing, to preserve the structure as well as convert it to a new productive use. Next slide. One of the first obstacles we face is regulatory. It's currently zoned R1, which is a single family residential designation. A school like the original use is permitted within the R1 zoning district. However, moving forward, uh, this designation makes nearly all types of likely development non-permitted. In order to make future use of the building viable, the county is requesting the property be rezoned to CM2, which is a commercial mixed use zoning. In both cases, I note the subject parcel falls within the Historic Preservation Overlay District. This district is intended to pr protect, preserve, and enhance the city's character, historical significance, and distinctive architecture. What this means regarding our request is the permitted uses will be regulated by the proposed CM2 designation, while the development standards, including building height setbacks, lot size, are regulated by the overlay. Slide 5. That's, uh, there's a lot of amazing examples to draw from when talking about historic school conversion. 
Conversions to apartments, condos, or senior living are some of the more common redevelopment projects we can find. And it also makes sense. Schools are constructed in residential areas. Classroom space can be converted to living quarters, while gyms and auditoriums can be used as common space or provide room for amenities for the tenants. Schools from this time period were well built. This is no exception. They were intended to last a really long time. The conversion of a building into condo apartments or assisted living would provide a housing mix alternative to single family residential, which there was a lot of in this age. This would be a lower maintenance option that still has a lot of historic character within walking distance of the downtown. This has potential to appeal to a wide range of people and could pro provide additional housing, particularly senior housing, which is needed in DC. Slide six. So you may wonder, if this project is so well suited for residential, why request a mixed use zoning? On this slide, I show how office use, event space, restaurant, community theater, and gyms have been successfully vertically integrated into a single structure. All these photos are taken from school conversion projects from around the country. If any town knows and understands the value of working with topography and making use of all levels of development, it's an old mining town like Bisbee. I believe the separate entrances by floor give it increased potential for mixed use. Also, when talking to community uh, residents, uh, assisted living facilities, artist space, and a range of public rec recreational space were all viewed as favorable future uses by adjacent landowners. These are not residential uses. Slide seven. On this slide, I show a comparison between allowable uses and the current and proposed zoning district. The city has 13 different zoning districts. This includes four residential categories, uh, two mixed use, uh, four commercial, and three manufacturing categories. R1 is a single family residential, possibly the most restrictive land use. It does not suit a 45,000 square foot building in the downtown. Our request is to rezone to a mixed use category, specifically CM2. CM2 permits a majority of the re redevelopment types that would suit the building and interests of the surrounding community. I know the existing uses of government office and commercial parking. While they are not permitted to R1, they are permitted in CM2. So it's always a plus when you can move uses out of non-conforming status. Slide eight. There are 15 factors the city uses to evaluate all rezoning requests. I evaluated our request using those factors in the application attachments. Of course, one issue is the road network and parking. This is an issue for really any redevelopment in the Areas built out. There's no room for additional roads, road widening, or even more parking. Given that, it will be a limiting factor moving forward and will ultimately impact project density. There are currently 50 open air parking spaces associated with the developments. Regardless of what specific form the new development takes, building residents or tenants will expect parking. Given its proximity to the downtown, I think many trips to and from the building can be on foot or bike, which lessens vehicular demands. The graphic I show on the slide uh, shows the current uh, zoning for Old Bisbee. The yellow is residential, but you can also see Commercial 1, which is pink, and CM2, which is orange, in the shopping and residence uh, restaurant districts. These are the primary zoning districts found in the downtown. Slide 9. Some of the other factors I know are that it complies with several goals, objectives, and policies of the general plan. Notably, to promote infill and the use of existing infrastructure, which reduces sprawl. I mentioned how it will not limit the future development of adjacent parcels and will reduce non-conforming uses currently present. It can promote housing stock diversity, and it would well encourage the redevelopment of this valuable historic building. Slide 10. With every rezoning petition, there are requirements for public notice. We tried to go over and beyond these requirements. We want this project to be a success. I define that as a preservation that's the highest and best use of the building that also serves the needs of the greater Bisbee community. On October 2nd, we held an open house at the high school. There was an article published in Sierra Vista Herald shortly before the meeting. Approximately 40 to 50 people attended, despite it being held on a beautiful Saturday morning. Uh, we asked attendees to fill out a short comment card and county staff was able to talk to many residents one-on-one. -on -one. As you can see on the slide, when we asked about their preference for future re uh, redevelopment, some of the more popular options were art studio, assisted living, retail use, and vocational schools. There's no perfect zoning designation, but the CM2 zoning comes closest in terms of what is allowed 
compared to the community interest that we have uh, gathered. Slide 11. On October 21st, 2021, this request went before the Planning and Zoning Commission. Ultimately, while there was consensus that a rezoning from R1 was appropriate, there was not consensus regarding which user designation was best. The county is not a developer. We are not, uh, we are the landowner, and we are selling this building. The current zoning is a clear obstacle for future redevelopment. Because of the building's prominent location and history, its transformation will be significant for Bisbee's future. From a tax revenue per acre perspective, a compact mixed-use infill building, like what could potentially occur in this location, can generate several times annual tax revenue than either a similar size residential or commercial building. Echoes to the city of Bisbee. Moving forward, we want to be responsible for evaluating proposals from developers through an RFP process. We would like to keep the entitlements broad at this point to attract a greater degree of interest. This means not limiting the zoning to either commercial or residential, but rather allowing both. This concludes our presentation. Um, at the bottom of the slide, I include a link to the project website. I invite you to go look and check it out. All right. Really quickly, a question for me. When you go out for the RFP to sell it, will it be a sealed bid or is it going to be an open option? I believe open option. Uh, well, it could be. We're going to have a criteria. So it'll more likely be. <laughs> it won't be auction like on the courthouse steps. It's going to be an RFP process where we receive bids that are sealed and then revealed at one time. Yeah. So, and then there's a. It won't be the necessarily the highest bidder. We we are going to put together an evaluation criteria that is best with the zoning in place that's best for the community. So, um, if we get a ten million dollar bid, that doesn't mean they get it. We could get a five million dollar bid or somebody who has the wherewithal to make the investments in the property in a relatively short period of time and proposing a use that we feel is acceptable for that area with the zoning in place. So. Um, and I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that's my question is it's not just a matter of who gets the most money, but what would be the best criteria for our for that area and, and what could possibly go in there besides I didn't want to see it just auctioned on the courthouse steps, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Um that's my first question, but I'll, I'll open it up. Who yeah, I would I would say that this is an appropriate uh, change to be made. We don't want this building to sit there and, and just rot away. It's a beautiful old building, and I think there's many things that can be done with this with the appropriate zone change. Anyone else? Uh, I'd like to commend the uh, proposed use slide in your presentation. It's the one slide that can sell the, the concept more than anything else in here. But thank you for that. I, I just wanted to make a comment and uh, for, for people who don't know mixed use it, it can still be partial uh, residential it's not I mean and that's the beauty of the uh, it's, it's, yeah I think it's a great idea all right seems like we have better consensus than the B and Z. yes go ahead um, I was you know just looking at the uh, PNZ meeting there was nobody there that spoke in favor of the, the zoning change, and the ones that, that spoke were opposed. Um, I mean, I, I have a, an issue with this. It is a beautiful building, and I wish the, the county would have um, done with it what they should have by taking care of it and, and investing in it. And they didn't. The county just let it. Uh, go into disrepair and you know these residential conversions that you show they look wonderful um but that's going to have to be somebody who has some very very deep pockets and the other thing of course that i'm concerned about up there is the parking i mean we all know what parking is is like up there um so to me that is a um, another headache for the residents that live up there depending on on uh, you know what what the use will be and then um, you said that you're going to have uh, criteria that they you know 
evaluating everything that you know could be somebody with with less money somebody with more money my question is of the people that are making this decision how many live up in the area we have informed the RFP committee we do want this to be a process where we have these be residents or elected officials a part of that so we in theory we would invite maybe an elected official or a city staff to be part of that process to help us evaluate the request if that's something we'd be interested in it would be a committee decision so so the city of this be will have oh some saying I'm sorry okay be recognized okay okay so go ahead the city of Bisbee will have some saying in this uh, once this has been yeah I'd like you to be a partner oh. with us oh. So I guess my concern goes back to the comment that Ms. Klein made about um, deep pockets. Obviously, if you're investing money into this, you're going to want the return back, which concerns me that the ultimate end run is going to be bed and breakfast or high-end housing when maybe a better use for this could have been for mixed housing, um, because that seems to be one of our biggest concerns in our town. I mean, it's it's nice to have these ideas about the mixed use and, res and you know, business space and such, but what's the guarantee once it's sold? Is that they're not gonna turn it into something that's not beneficial for us? I mean, there's a lot of history with this building. Um, it's in Ripley's, believe it or not. You know, I mean, it's it's got some cool cool history of Bisbee, but I, I, I don't wanna see it go into district care any more than it already has with the lack of care that the county's um, taken with it. But I guess my other concern is too, I don't wanna see it turned into some industrial enterprise it's going to benefit the fat cat and cost the neighbors and everyone else around it so my comment would address a couple of situations um what if we left it in any one of the r zones one two three or rm the parking issue could actually get worse because under our parking restrictions right now, um, we have no restrictions on anything residential. So if they turn it into total residential, there could be 200 cars that want to park there to, to the same 200 residents. So, however, if it gets changed into the, into the CM, then it will fall under the CM um, parking situations, which they would have to meet the, the needs. So in one way, it's better to be in the CM than it is in the R as far as parking goes. So that's one thing I've checked out, not only with our attorney today, but also with our plan. So I kind of settled me on that, that be a strictly a residential situation could actually be worse because we don't have any control over the parking at that point unless we change all of our parameters again. And that would be spot zoning, which probably wouldn't be very, very good. So, um, but I guess my last thing is that you were, I heard when I went up there and visited that you were all talking about some sort of overseer on the sale that it has to remain as it is outside or mm -hmm. so what could you just address so that for everybody? We could also place an historic preservation overlay on top of it as, as an easement um, that would go along with the sale. And that would either be initiate, initiated by us as the current owner or future owners, typically future owners want to do it for the, the tax credit um, because it would provide a significant tax credit from a historic preservation standpoint. But what that does is it preserves, it preserves the, the shell of the exterior of the building. And that's really what we want to see remain. We want, and all the, the structures that contribute to making it stand up and, and how it looks from the outside, we have a, a strong interest in making it stay that way. That would be my desire and something that I would, uh, would like to see put on to that. There is federal money for businesses that put money into things like that, so there is some tax advantages to it also. Uh, that's, I looked at other zoning that I watched the meeting and there was CM1 was brought up and R3 was brought up and, and besides the CM2 and CM1 only allows like three more or takes away like three things which wouldn't really have any a furniture store automobile rental that's not ever going to be there that's that's a couple of things uh 
a physical fitness center would be the only one that would that would uh, possibly not be in a CM1 but in a CM2. So I didn't see that that was any advantageous to drop it to a C1, CM1. And, and what you're asking for is what we're voting on tonight. We're not here to change, but I just wanted to bring some of the discussion forward that I, I watched on the uh, planning zoning meeting. So, um, go ahead. Um, I was lo looking at some of the comments, and I guess clarification should be made um, because people are confused because they thought a split vote by planning and zoning uh, meant that it couldn't pass. So there's people that are asking about that out in TV land. Yeah. So, so go ahead, ahead. Joe. Councilmember Jack Alito and Mayor and members of council. That was brought to my attention and that was my uh, determination was is that when you have a motion and that motion uh, results in a tie vote, then it is essentially the same as a, uh, a no vote. So that so as to not belabor and keep this bogged down and not being able to move it forward to the council that was determined that that would then be presented to council the explanation of the tie vote explained that it was essentially a recommendation uh, against the rezone application and then ultimately it is the council's determination decision to make that uh, final determination as to whether or not to grant the rezone application or not so but under parliamentary procedures a, a tie vote uh, results as a as same thing as a no vote but it is a recommendation and not it's not something we're bound by necessarily correct yeah. does that answer your question i'm just reading oh <laughs> yeah i was just reading to say i wanted to clarify for yeah those people watching absolutely uh any other comments we move forward I move to approve ordinance 0 21 17 to rezone APN 102 62 025, 103 62 027, and 103 62 025B, 100 Clawson Avenue, owned by Cochise County, from R1 to CM 2. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item number five as presented, or uh, as the motion was made. Roll call, please. Councilmember Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Nay. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Nay. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes by two. Thank you. Moving on to item six. This is discussion on possible approval. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I heard something. Uh, redoing. This is item number six. Discussion on possible approval to enter into a memorandum of understanding between the city of Bisbee and Ecotopia be doing business as Bisbee Bikeways for the Coordination of the implementation of the Bisbee Area Mobility Master Plan and Lavender Pit Feasibility Study. Did, or did I, was I told it before? No. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Please don't. You, you um, gave me that scary look. No, um, no, I was just going to say thank you and good evening, everybody. Uh, this was listed as uh, myself and Mr. Taylor as presenters, and after talking to the city attorney, and negotiating uh, on the agreement this afternoon with Bisbee Bikeways, we have decided to punt the ball to the city attorney. They just missed me for the last year. Want to hear my raspy voice from my throat surgery. So, Mayor and Council, all we have here is just it's a, a memorandum of understanding between the city and Bisbee Bikeways uh, with regard to the coordination of uh, trying to uh, acquire and get funding and, and grants and things uh, for this overall project, which is detailed in here. Um, with that, we met with, uh, with uh, Bisbee Bikeways today to go over uh, some minor uh, changes that they were asking for with regard to this MOU. Um, so I just wanted to point out what, what those changes were that we discussed and it, and it 
uh, agree to and would ask that if, if a motion is made to approve the MOU, that it be made to approve the MOU subject to the, the changes presented um, tonight. And so those changes are, are fairly mild on page three of the MOU under uh, paragraph B3, where it starts off uh, BD, which is the acronym for Busy Biker, mm -hmm. will prepare, maintain, and submit to the city any reports and or records. We're adding in a word only relating to the services performed by BD under this MOU, just so there was no concern that there was no records or reporting requirements for anything else that BD is doing that's not related to this MOU. Um, so that's the one change. And then paragraph four, just below that, they ask that we include a, as time and funding permit, BD will implement and direct a public outreach program to inform the community of goals and objectives. And I think they just wanted to make sure that, that it wasn't, you know, if for some reason that, that, that there wasn't sufficient time or sufficient funding, that that wasn't gonna be an obligatory requirement. Um, and then down to paragraph seven, where it talks, says, BB will in good faith use funds raised to purchase goods and services for the benefit of the plans. The, uh, we're striking out the, the first part of the next uh, sentence, and we're striking any funds provided to or obtained by BB on behalf of the city shall be considered gifts to the city, which are hereby accepted. And we're just starting that second sentence off with, BB agrees that it shall not charge the city for any goods purchased or services rendered pursuant to this MOU. Um, just as if there was some confusion as to talking about gifts and acceptance and things. And, and the nice thing is that the last part of that says, unless otherwise mutually agreed upon in writing between the parties. So if something changes, we can always mutually agree upon um, something different. And then the final change is as on page four, under regular paragraph seven, where it talks about non-fund obligating or legal enforce, enforceable document. Uh, just in this paragraph, it takes and replaces the word city and replaces it with parties. So it's a mutually uh, applied paragraph. So for example, let's say the MOU is not intended to be a legally binding enforceable document that does not create a legal financial or funding or other fiscal obligations of any kind on the parties. Um, so everywhere that the word city is, it will say party. And those are the only changes uh, to the MOU with regard to uh, moving forward. And one of the reasons for the MOU is Bisbee Bikeways needs a, a formal uh, memorandum of understanding when they go and submit applications for grants and things so that they can show that uh, we have this agreement between the entities for them to do that on behalf of the city. Yes. Big bucks. <laughs> if it gets uh, questions about the memorandum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you know, the idea of an MOU is so eventually it keeps the kind of working relationship, eventually. I mean, the MOUs. What is, I mean, and you just you just said it. You answered my question before you asked, but I want you to elaborate. I mean, what are the benefits? The benefits they are using our uh, so for. They will use the city's name when they are trying to secure funds or get donation, and we will have from what I read, we have we will have overseeing power about about the funding. The funding with the, any any money I think that comes into. We, we will be interested in that, will be under our supervision, am I correct? Correct, and then that's the, the purpose of the MOU is to, to spell out what, the, what, what each party uh, is going to be bringing to the table, what we're gonna do. So you have on page two where it states the responsibilities. There's all the responsibilities that are listed by the city. And then on page three is the responsibilities by BB and what, what they're going to do. And it just spells those out so everybody knows going into this what's ant what's anticipated, expected of, of each other, uh, so that we you know can and make this a a coordinated effort to try to get as much funding and grants available to move forward with these uh, bikeway uh, multi-use pathway plans 
that have been uh, presented and, and the council has already voted prior to this that this is a, a, a project that the, the city would like to see move forward. This helps the city because it, Bisbee Bikeways is able to do a lot of this work that the city just doesn't have the, the manpower resources uh, to do and doesn't cost the city any, uh, any extra time to do it. So it is in the budget. Okay. No, just the, the question I have uh, is, um, I mean, I think you answer it, but I just want to make, make sure it's clarified, because when someone reads it, uh, you know, what the benefits they get, I mean, you know, they're supposed to be doing everything, we give them the name to use, you know, that we are supporting this endeavor, we're supporting this project. I mean, I, I, and later on we'll find out, I mean, what's the cost and how it's going to look like, I mean, okay. I'm not ready to ask this now. No. <laughs> Just uh, as noted, it uh, has a 2026 date, unless it you know, up, uh, ends then. Just so that one usually has an ending date on, on one of these. Any other comments? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve and enter into a memorandum of understanding between the city of Bisbee and Ecotopia, I guess that's a, doing business as Bisbee White Bikeways for the coordination and implementation of the Bisbee Area Mobility Master Plan and Lavender Pit Feasibility Study with changes that have been presented tonight. I second. That's why I want to <laughs> All right, we got a motion and a second. And this will be for item number six. I'll have to read that one again. <laughs> <laughs> Vote, please. Council Member Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Nay. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes 6 1. Moving forward, on to item 7. This is a discussion of possible approval to purchase five portable defibrillators for the city of Bisbee to be placed in different departments from the AED one stop shop using American Rescue Plan Act funds. I believe that this was on our list uh, of things that we said would be a good idea. Go ahead, uh, Jay. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, Lieutenant Robert Klein did all the legwork on this, so I'm gonna defer this to him. He worked on the, the quotes for the AD, so. Good evening, Mayor Council. Before you, you should have uh, three competitive quotes for um, brand new AEDs. The model that we're going to be focusing on is the Life Pack CR2. Oh. Is it the Life Pack? It's, it's Life Pack is the manufacturer oh. of the particular <coughs> one, the CR2. Cool. And then, uh, if I may, just to give you a, a brief history on the importance of the AEDs, uh, research shows that when they are used correctly and almost immediately within a, a cardiac arrest, the survival rates increase up to about 70% on average. And then with the um, anticipation of placing these into uh, various buildings with the most um, traffic, we believe that this is a very smart use of the funds and uh, a very valuable piece of medical equipment that we can uh, get out into the city. So, anybody doesn't know what these do, okay. two big patches and yes, that, tell, that is it correct. tells you, do so, something or don't do something, right? Yes, so um, some, of the, some of the highlights of this particular model is it comes with um, some of the most state-of-the-art technology that's available, one of which is um, the clear voice technology. With this particular unit, we'll be able to do will be pick up the ambient noise in its surrounding area and we'll adjust its volume to meet that uh -huh. current volume. So that uh, is a very valuable tool, and it'll sit there and help with the correct usage and hopefully um, make it more effective. Another function of this is they do come with child mode, and what that is is it's a simple either button or toggle switch, depending on the model and that will in automatically change the energy setting from adult to pediatric and vice versa. Again, it's a safety feature, it's built in, and that will reduce the 
chances of it being misused. And then one of the other important uh, features is it gives CPR coaching. Now what this does is it's a audio person who is judging the CPR that's being done by the bystander. And depending on its effectiveness, it will advise the person to speed up, slow down, press harder, or not press harder. So it's, it's real-time coaching. And these particular models, they do come with um, some Bluetooth capabilities that can be sent to one specific smartphone. And we will be able to run a um, diagnostic, if you will, on this particular model. And it will give us a heads up on about battery life, um, pad expiration dates and any inner workings of the particular model. So that way we know about it as soon as it starts to malfunction, we're using it and it not working properly. And then with the different quotes here, this particular model, each and every one of them come with a standard eight year manufacturer's warranty. So is there, um, is service included? Like, do they have to be recharged every year or are they inspected every These year? These batteries, Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you there. These batteries are listed for roughly five to seven years before potential replacement. And it also depends on how often the monitor, or I'm sorry, the device is used, if at all. And with the, um, the service plan that is attached to one of them, I will get an alert, or someone will get an alert on their phone indicating that one particular model's battery is um, failing. And if it's within that warranty, it will be sent back and replaced by a whatever company is used. Okay, thank you. We have five locations. Um, yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, first of all, um, this is an item we did discuss uh, when we discussed the American Rescue Plan uh, funding. And uh, once we had that uh, list compiled for the near term, um, I asked uh, Acting Chief Richardson to have someone at the fire department uh, do some research and bring us a recommendation uh, of the machines that they would want us to have. And even though uh, my, my first request was for uh, six machines, we wanted to keep this purchase under $10,000. So uh, what we're getting is five machines currently. Um, there will be one machine at every public building that's in use except the two fire stations because they obviously have much larger defibr defibrillators than we do, um, which is none at the moment. Um, and so um, we were looking originally at six because I was thinking two for City Hall, but I think until we build the City Hall, we probably only need one. And so um, it's, it's the right amount for right now. Uh, and at some future point, we may want to pick up one or two other units um, but most of all, I just wanted to thank Lieutenant Klein for doing the legwork for us uh, because uh, when, I, when I Googled AEDs, all I got was confused. And so we, wanted, uh, we decided it was in our best interest to have somebody that knows this kind of equipment to help us uh, to specify the unit that would be best for our city building. So thank you, Robert. I really appreciate your help. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead. Okay, so Mr. Falcon, you answered my question uh, because I was going to say that I noticed that American AED was for six, and we're going with the um, one for five, and I mean it looks like it's a, a better deal, um, the AED. But that was my my question as to why we went from six to five. Yeah, so uh, probably at some future point in a year or two or whenever uh, you make any major changes in public facilities, um, uh, it, it, it's kind of kind of neat because um, we uh, went through a process of, uh, of, of realizing that uh, the safety of our own employees depending on it depended on our, uh, all of us ourselves. And earlier this year, uh, Chief Richardson and I uh, decided it was a great idea to teach city employees how to actually use the fire extinguishers that were hanging on the wall in our own buildings. Because it occurred to us that while, you know, some of us have used those things in the past, a lot of folks never did. And we want to take the mystery out of it. Um, with the AEDs, it was the same thought process. 
Okay, so now they are trained on the use of a piece of equipment that can stop something from getting worse before the fire department uh, responds. Uh, the, the same rationale went into the ADPs, and that's why that one's brought forward. So, uh, uh, assuming that you approve this purchase this evening, um, once they do arrive, there is a, 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 a brief level of training that will be um, uh, shared with the employees uh, before we hang them up on the wall, so that uh, so that like with fire extinguishers, they won't be afraid to use them should the need arise. <coughs> That was going to be my next question, is uh, if they were going to get the training like they did on the extinguishers. The answer is yes. Thank you. Okay. Just a follow-up if I may. Okay. Sure. So will all the employees be trained? I mean, every like you said, in five different departments, every employee in each of these departments will be trained on this mission? Yes. Okay. So we've been heard to have a CPR class. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do those too. Yes. And, and that'd be another thing, Mr. Mayor, is, um, of course, we absolutely want to train and educate the city employees, elected officials, and members of the general public. These AEDs are becoming widely available as the price slightly comes down. So you'll start to see them in uh, shopping centers, grocery stores, schools, and everything. So we will absolutely make this training available to um, all city employees and elected officials. And much like the fire extinguishers, it also come with a yearly refresher, just so that way it's not a one and done type of deal. Yeah. And uh, if I may, just uh, real quick on the AED one stop, the initial one that seems to be the favorite, um, even though it's for five monitors or six, this one does come with the AED kit, which as you can see in the description right there, comes with gloves, trauma shears, razor, towel lids and disposable face masks. So as the city manager stated, the safety of our employees is of utmost concern with this particular kit. That's one additional step that we can take to ensure that. All right, when we get to a second story, we can add a second one. But like the garbage truck, we don't buy them all at the same time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay, well, I think we shot this one to death, so. <laughs> How about a motion? I move to approve the purchase of five portable defibrillators for the city of Bisbee to be be placed in different departments from ADD One Stop Shop using American Rescue Plan Act funds. Second. Motion and a second to approve the purchase of five AEDs. Roll call, please. Councilmember Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Johns. Aye. Councilmember Sweet. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein. Aye. Mayor Budge. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. We move on to number 8. This is. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, no. I got it. Oh, okay. Okay. Here we go. This is discussion possible approval to use American Rescue Plan Act funds to purchase a second LP. That's LIPAC 15 cardiac monitor for the fire department. Okay, thank you once again, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, as you know, uh, we purchased uh, this identical unit a couple of months ago using American Rescue Plan funding. Um, and we, we discussed at the time whether we should purchase one or two, uh, and we held back on purchasing two because we had a pending uh, grant application out and uh, we wanted to see how that would result. Uh, the, the result of that application was we were not funded. Um, and so uh, historically, uh, we've always tried to have two uh, of the latest and greatest uh, light pack units on the two vehicles that are used most often in the EMS service. And, uh, and, and I know that uh, Chief Richardson spent a lot of time the last time we talked about this uh, listing uh, what the uh, deficiencies and, and the, the things that were wearing out on these two units, which were are approximately the same age. Um, so, uh, and here again, uh, we did not get funded uh, by the funding source that we applied for. Um, we also were just notified that uh, we were not funded for the fire truck uh, that we applied for. Uh, we had set aside $50,000 in budget uh, for that. Um, and, uh, and then we had set aside $25,000 in 
the American Rescue Plan list uh, because uh, uh, I learned that uh, a private citizen was also going to fund a part of the matching fund for the fire truck. Nevertheless, we didn't get funded for either one. So um, what I would like to ask council to do tonight uh, is to allow us uh, to purchase an identical unit to the one that was just uh, received um, using American Rescue Plan funding. Um, and to give you a, a thumbnail sketch where we are right now, uh, we have either spent or committed to spend $212,000 of the $872,000 that you've received so far. Now, realizing there's other stuff on the list, uh, as, as we get through this stuff that is strictly purchase items, some of the bigger stuff is gonna come along later um, and could take the rest of the fiscal year, maybe into the following fiscal year to actually complete those projects as well. So um, in the interest of, of maintaining the best level of equipment, um, and, and, and again, uh, these units um, are, are the big dogs. They're the ones that uh, the paramedics uh, use uh, when they run on you and you're in full rest. And, um, and, and you need that sort of thing. We wanna make sure um, that the units that we have on board are the very best. And so uh, this is just, uh, tonight is simply a request to do that. Um, Chief Richardson, I believe, Jim, the price is the same, isn't it, as the last unit? The price is the same until February. Okay, so, so the price we paid for the last unit is exactly what we will spend for this unit. And so with your permission, and as you recall, the last time we also uh, had a, a statement of sole source on that equipment, so we, we don't have to uh, go out and get bids. We can simply go out and purchase the unit uh, uh, if, if you agree. So that's my request. All right. Uh, just as note, I remember they said you could turn the old one in for a little credit, so all right. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It, the one, you need a backup, I know, but the one. They gave us about a two thousand dollar credit on one of them. They haven't they haven't came and asked for it yet, but they they gave us credit. Oh, okay. all right. Maybe we'll get another one. Uh, comments. Go ahead. Yeah. How, how much is it? You say it's similar to what you could. Can you tell us what the price is? Because I mean, I forget. The price for the uh, LP fifteen was thirty two thousand plus. The care pro plan, which is the insurance, if anything happens to it, um, that was around seventy five hundred. So it was just just under forty thousand for everything. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Entertain a motion. I move to uh, approve the use of the American Rescue Plan Act funds. To purchase a second LP 15 cardiac monitor for the fire department. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the purchase of a second LP 15 uh, the same price as before. Go ahead, Ashley. Councilmember Pollock? Aye. Councilmember Giacomino? Aye. Councilmember Davis? Aye. Councilmember Johns? Aye. Councilmember Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. All right, <clears throat> moving on. This will be item number nine. It's discussion of possible approval to have Jacobs, our wastewater plant, con plant contractor, manage a qualified contractor to provide headworks improvements. Matthew? Good evening, uh, Mayor and uh, Council. Thank you for uh, your time. Uh, so tonight, we're uh, Public Works is asking that we um, have Jacobs manage a qualified contractor for the Huber Headworks Influent Screening Unit. Um, as you can see in the discussion, with parts they previously identified as part of the complete build, uh, the internal components have worn out and uh, no longer uh, functioning as designed. Um, Jacobs will provide a qualified subcontractor and crane to assist with the component removal and additional personnel as needed um, to complete this build. Um, so this is at the at, at the beginning pretty much of the plant is where this is and it's uh, 
no longer functioning as it should be. I also have uh, uh, Ron Jacobson from uh, Jacobs to answer any questions because he's the expert on all of this. So if you have any questions on that, uh, that is, as you can see, the physical impact, $36,488.19. Um, I do want to note uh, on this first one, it says the, uh, the line item uh, balance, that is actually the balance if the, the second one that we have on number 10 is approved. So somehow it got uh, switched around, so I do apologize. So the actual current balance on that line item is $129,805. Yeah, that, that, works. that didn't work for a long time anyway. And then it got go, and now it's running. Yes, sir. Usable life is used. Uh, questions? Yeah, go ahead, Mel. I mean, that's uh, quite a bit of money here, but I have to ask some questions. I mean, when was this decided? Uh, if I may ask, okay. So, this is a, a major repair, a major yes. change of uh, <coughs> compartment. I mean, how long have you been looking at this? What have you done to rectify the situation? Is this something was in the planning? Is this something that you had thought about previously? Or all of a sudden we felt, oh, this is no longer working and we need to go purchase this. And what was the lifespan of this? Did we, has this part been appreciated? I mean, we've used it to its life. Uh, and then if you, you know, I don't want to, if you can answer this, maybe we can go to the next question. Sure. Yeah, the uh, little history on the unit. Um, it's been 15 years since it was installed. And from what I understand, before we took over operations, it failed. and was It failed in place for three years. Mm -hmm. It didn't operate. When that happened, all sludge from the entire city for three years bypassed that and has been deposited in the basins. So you have a false floor in there about a foot or two of everything the city had for three years. So the machine was dead. They did a repair, from what I understand, and that was a, it, it just had a broken auger in there, they fixed that, but none of the major parts and didn't repair it at all. When I came in and took over, Jesus was, said you had established a contract because of that with the Huber to come out and do an inspection every year for $2,000. Well, they came down and he called me up and says, we'd like to have them come down. He says, all right, we'll take care of that now that we're there. They came down and did an inspection of it and came back and says, oh, you only need $400 worth of parts. And I said, wow, that's awesome. And then I went into the parts, parts show up, had no recommended, you know, it might as well have been a, a car cover for a carburetor. It did, didn't make any sense. So I called Hugh Brett and I says, well, we paid $2,000 for a bogus inspection. They immediately sent down their Sprechensee Deutsch guys because they're German. And I don't mean that in any <laughs> derogatory way, but the guy who can speak German that showed up. So they took this seriously. And that came back with this, what you say now. It was a complete shambles. It hadn't been, there's been no maintenance on it since it was installed other than that repair. So it could fail while we're standing here. It's one of those things that would cost you three times as much if you had to repair that. Mm -hmm. TNM, you know, it's just, it's just extraordinary, especially now with all the port, you know, ships off port, you're not going to get anything without expensive air freight. A container from Japan used to cost 2000 right now it's 20000 You don't want to, you don't want to push those buttons. And so with this repair, they come in and do it and we'll have a crane on site. Our guys, and they'll, they'll literally remove the guts from the machine and repair it. Right now you don't have any grit settling going on. There's no uh, grease removal from the top. It's just frozen in place, literally. And it's, it's just, it, that's where you're at right now. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, just a, a historical context on, on this. And I'm going to use terminology. Uh, uh, Ron, Ron uses real nice clinical uh, terminology when he describes what, what happens with that machine. Uh, basically, in, in layman's terms, when you flush the toilet, what goes through the sewer system and once it reaches the plant, the Huber is the first machine that separates the heavy solids from the rest of the influent to the plant, okay? So what Ron is describing to you, and I know this because I was here when it failed the first time, and I physically went down and inspected the unit to realize that the the, the crew that was supposed to be maintaining the equipment at the time, none of whom are still here, um, had totally failed to 
maintain that machine in any way, shape, or form. And it had ran, excuse me, it had run for several years without uh, even so much as, as, as grease job on bearings. So um, this is an extremely important piece of equipment uh, to keep maintained. And, um, <clears throat> and because of the lack of maintenance before uh, Ron and his crew came in to run the plant a few years ago, um, the, the, the reality is, is that a lot of those solids that we, that, that we depend on this machine to remove so that the basins can operate properly, weren't doing it because the machine wasn't maintained properly, and so now we, we're, we have what's going to be a basin problem in the not too distant future. So I have a follow-up question. Sure, go ahead. Just uh, since you stand. So we'll repair it, and this is uh, the amount for it. Uh, what kind of warranty or guarantee we're going to have on this expenditure? It will be a year standard industry warranty that they, if something that they dare work did, it would fail, they would cover it. And what's the standard? It's a year standard. It's, a year. it's just normal, you know, that's like with the UV system, anything. They, they, they you know, the warranty things for a year. Is there any way we can get the additional guarantee or warranty so we don't have to go back we're and it. spend all this money? We're it. We, by maintaining this unit properly, this will last a long time. With proper maintenance, we replace usable parts on a regular schedule and, and set up an asset management program. You know that this machine is on its last legs. When we get it back, just plan on five years replacing that machine in an asset type management situation. You know, it, it's, you need to, you know, I work for Las Vegas. I ran the Las Vegas plant, 150 MGD, and you got a 700 acre billion dollar facility. And, you know, you don't want this happening, you know, and I'm not the guy that ran everything, don't get me wrong. But you have to see down the road. You have to know that this thing is going to cost 10 times as much then. Buy it now, and it's there. Buy it from the company so you know it's coming, so you know that this asset will be, it's not going to be a, a screen fest for the, the town. No, it'll be something you budgeted for, you expect, and it's happening. With, but pretty much with most of the things that I'm going to tell you about, that's it. That's, that's what has been not happened. And with that plan, then you don't have these, you know, Whoops, is all, you know, come on, God, this is so much. Well, you know, for 15 years, I just say you're very fortunate that this has lasted. Mm -hmm. I love your explanation, thank you. No problem. <laughs> I'm a layman. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. Right, next one will be Pons. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ah, go ahead. Mr. Jacobs, in the scope of work attached to this uh, action item, CH2M Hill OMI is referenced. Is that your company? It used to be Jacobs bought CH2M Hill. Okay. Jacobs is a worldwide billion dollar corporation. They bought them out of Denver. That's where the hell. So they're still legally called CH2M in some areas. And OMFS is Operation Maintenance Facility Systems. We run federal Fort Huachuca. We got a huge facility that we run that for the government in Phoenix, Tucson. There's just, they're everywhere in everything. And it, you know, it's, that, that's what Jacobs does. And that's just the, the people. The name on top of it, you know. So have you chosen a subcontractor to perform this work? Yes. Yeah, yeah. you already yes. have? Yes. Okay. And that price, 36,488.19, is a firm fixed price? It is right now because you know when they say a 90 day quote, yep. and I can just explain the cost of what's going on in the world right now, delay just it goes up. Okay. So that's why I was I pushed my company because I was ready to give a talk to Steve long ago about this and uh, I was ready to act. but. At the speed of bureaucracy and then corporations, this is as fast as we could get it to you. Well, thank you. You bet. Basically, the reason it's called it, uh, Hubler is because that's the company's name. Yes, made. Huber International of Germany. They, yeah. This is what they do. They make the people. Mm -hmm. they, make, they make good stuff. I just, yeah. They make good stuff. All right. It's lasted, so that, that's a good one. It's like a Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, and just a question oh. to Steve. Since we knew we had this problem, so I'm assuming you had budget for this, we have the money for this. In, in your wastewater budget, you budget a hundred and something thousand dollars. 129,000. Yeah, it's actually, so, that's for the whole so it's year. false within yeah, that. For, for the whole year, so that when Jacobs encounters a situation like this, the money is in our budget, and all he has to do is come and ask okay. you for, to, in order and to explain to you. Yeah, okay. yeah. At the beginning of the year, there's, uh, well, at the beginning of the fiscal year, there's 130. Okay. That's what it, we budget for the year for the, the plan. So he's trying to spend it on. The next one is spend it on. All right. I'm stingy uh, with your money. Uh, please, yeah. <laughs> okay. We Uber just for this? Okay. <laughs> um, I'll uh, just make a motion to 
It's moved to approve to have Jacobs manage a qualified contractor to provide headworks improvements. Second. Motion to second to approve item number nine as proposed. Roll call. Councilmember Pollock. Aye. Councilmember Giacomino. Aye. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Councilmember Sweet. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein. Aye. Mayor Budge. Aye. Motion passes seven zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Item number 10, discussion possible approval to have Jacobs, our wastewater plant contractor, manage a qualified contractor provide a complete replacement of the water reclamation plant if in effluent pump station panel and its components. Go ahead. All right, kind of like the other one, it's at the beat. We're right there. Uh, we're asking to approve to have Jacobs manage a qualified contractor. That contractor is Ripple Industries. Uh, they will provide a complete replacement of the water reclamation plants. Uh, influent pump, uh, the station panel, and the, those components that are critical to managing that uh, that flow uh, through the facility. Um, the influent controls have exhausted again. Uh, no one of those things that have been working for a long time. It, it's exhausted its life and is no longer functioning as in, as intended. Um, and then a, a new uh, panel schematic will be provided upon. Uh, any questions? That is also um, the physical impact is $31,114.23. So, with that, if we, I'll go back to the other one, you, that would bring our, with, with both of them, that would bring our uh, balance line uh, item uh, to $93,316.81 before um, this one. Does this tie into the main thing yes. that runs? This keeps everything flowing. What what yeah. happened is we had a, a call out, skate a call out, you know, alarm failed. Right. The guys so came out. Yeah, yeah, they came out to the plant. The pump, pump station had failed. There was nothing coming through. And what happens if it fills up? It's only five thousand gallons, so it fills up quickly. It bypasses and goes into the SBR two, so it doesn't flow out on the ground. So they got out there and they couldn't get the pumps to start. So I called Jim's Electric, which is the local guy that we always call it. He couldn't, couldn't get it fixed. So I called Ripple, which is our control systems people and that, that I know of and I've worked with them for years here in Arizona. They came down and they found out that the contactors, the grounding system was bad. And then they looked at the microprocessors. They're 16 years old, obsolete. There's no replacements for them, no parts. If it fails, I should say, well, when it fails, then you're going to have guys out there. They will be the automatic 24-7 for four to five weeks while they design and build a panel, come down and put it in. That's given the state of equipment, the parts. And again, I'm real trepidatious about these parts things because if it's on the shelf now, next week, you know, and I've, I've run into that already. I'm telling you, it's, you know, I'm not trying to sell things. I don't make anything. I'm just trying to keep these from happening to you guys and for to the city. And that pump station, it, it's antique. It's, you know, like I say, in our jargon, because there's no, no parts, you can't fix it. So if it failed, if that was what failed, other than a grounding system, the gyms couldn't, didn't find it, Ripple found, that they says, if it was other, that's where you guys will be. You'll be standing out here. And again, I've seen when most fails, you cost them double or triple because everybody's all hands on deck and, and contractors love hearing that. We all know it, it just gets 10 times more expensive. And this, when this is repaired, this is good for 20 years, 15, 20 years. And with equipment that's now uh, name brand equipment, not some Whenever they built the plant, some you know people value engineer things. They buy stuff that's cheap and, and available at that time. The company goes bankrupt, they disappear, and you know that's happening all the time now. That's what I'm up against trying to find equipment. With Ripple, they'll get industry standard stuff. Heard the name Alan Bradley, things like that. General Electric. We're talking people that will be around. So we want to make sure you, you're not going to get the most expensive stuff. You want stuff that's reliable, and I rely on Ripple to do that for us. They have the experience with it, and, and they built the cabinet already for the re reuse pump station. They did that one, and this one is, like I said, it's the influence pump station. It's critical. I mean, there isn't a piece of the plant that's not critical. <laughs> let's face it. But if this fails, it, it's one of those oof, you just don't want it to happen, you know. Yeah, prices go up when you're in emergency mode. Well, it, it just triples. There, there's, and I, that's my experience. You know, I've been doing this for 40 years. It, it doesn't get cheaper. It never does. All right. I think the uh, case has been made, huh? <laughs>
Yes, sir. Yeah. One more question. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, I just want to know, is this uh, the price quoted? That's including installation? Everything. Everything. So, so we don't, we're not going to see any one and done. additional expense. One and done. Yeah, and cool. how long will it take for them to, to do it? What's Once I get this done here, if it depends on their workload right now. Yeah. One month. Yeah, we have you the city of Bisbee, uh, we have used Ripple, and they have redone our whole um, lift station in Ten Town and did a phenomenal job. I've used them for a long time, that's why I said I recommend them to you guys. And I read there, I've got them helping Knocko out too. Knocko doesn't have a flow meter, they got one now. And, uh, they just spent twenty thousand dollars for a flow meter. And, uh, and if it goes out, I'll, I'll pay you overtime to run the switch. <laughs> no, I just, I just want to make sure this is good that we replace and everything. So next year we're not going to have no, much expenses. No, no, that's no, good. No. So no. I have you on camera. Oh, you do this and then you maintain it. Yeah, believe me. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll remember. Okay. All right. Uh, let's. I move to approve to have Jacobs manage the qualified contractor to provide influence pump station and panel and its components. I second. All right, now a motion to second. Approve item number 10 as proposed. Go for it. Council Member, Member Pollock? Aye. Council Member Giacomino? Aye. Council Member Davis? Aye. Council Member Johns? Aye. Council Member Sweet? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Klein? Aye. Mayor Budge? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. So. All right. Thank you. Well, like, thank you. Thank, thank you. Any time. Yeah, no problem. Uh, number 11, this is a discussion of possible recommendations, recommendations on performance evaluation of our city attorney, Mr. Estes. Uh, anyone that says recommendations on the performance? You can give me whatever recommendations you want. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'll perform on all right, I'll have to get up and perform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, just read right to me, but I, I'm dyslexic, so that's just a move on. All right. Anyway, uh, it's uh, what have we been now? Uh, four, twelve? Almost, Almost a year. Almost a year. Yeah. Uh, beginning of December of last year. That's right. So I think I'll open it up for discussion. If anybody has. What they would like to say. Go ahead. Um, I would just like to say I appreciate um, the thoroughness um, and answering questions that I've always asked. Um, I think you've been very above professional. Um, you have um, helped the city, I think, immensely. And um, although I may not have agreed with everything, I appreciate um, your counsel and your. Um, Clarity in explaining things to us, especially those of us that don't always talk about things. So, um, I appreciate it. I always like to joke that I was able to go through and, and, and get through law school. You know, the way I, I explain things should be able to be understood and try not to be one of those attorneys that throws in the whereas, therefores, and all those things that just confuse people. You know, let's try to keep things as simple as possible and explain the, the reasons behind and, uh, and be able to do that. And that's my, my goal as a city attorney. I view my, my position as a, I'm a, a, a service support staff. Uh, the mayor and council, you guys set the, uh, the goals and objectives and the, and the policies for the, for the city and the city manager implements those in my job is to assist the, the council and, the, and management to be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You know, I'm going to go next because last time I went last on the city manager, so I didn't have a chance to say that wasn't already said. Oh, 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 this time. So guess what? The mayor gets to have a little extra here. Anyway, so I gave some thought, Joe. Um, I'll be honest, um, when we first started thinking of hiring an attorney way outside of my realm and in Phoenix, I was a little worried, to say the least, um, but that quickly uh, abated, I have to admit. Um, I always have found you very, very available, not only to myself, but I'm sure to most of all administration, and that's very appreciative. A text or a quick call, and, and you've always come back and 
dug me out of some holes. So um, the mayor uses it a little more than maybe the council members. I never, but um, I appreciate the fact that you were actually a council member at one time and you can understand where we are and that you bring your expertise from other cities. And that's, uh, that's important to me. We're not reinventing the wheel every time. And of course, I love your calm demeanor and yeah, kind of good sense of humor. So that's always, that's always good. So I, I have to admit, I mean, I went back and said, well, what, is it, what have we done? And, and I remember the first thing I went to you for was the animal show. I said, I said uh, there were many failed attempts with our past attorney it says we they didn't have we didn't have a responsible bidder, and you straightened that one out and got us uh, got us into and, and negotiated a, a good contract and, and I think that's that's done a lot for us. So that was a, that was the first uh, big hurdle that I threw at you and and I really appreciated that and I brought things like the ambulance subscription service that wasn't didn't sit well with me and it, that really wasn't really done well and. That was put to rest. Uh, you helped me many times with the COVID proclamations and emergency declarations, but I'm trying to figure out what the heck the governor is saying and, and how it's supposed to go. And, um, you know, then there was this long uh, suit that was going on with our animal control from our animal control officer. From him, we got that settled. And there's a lot of partial issues, like you know things of. Anytime you encompass titles and all that kind of stuff with property, it becomes very, very legal. And I appreciate you handling that. And then, believe it or not, you actually worked on the contract for Mr. Popham when we decided to make a transition. So I appreciated your work on that with me on that. Um, you worked with me on the farmer's market issues. And now, of course, we're in workforce housing that you've done tons of stuff on. and. I won't even say how many hours he'll press, but, but and tonight I finished it. That's just, that's a great thing. And anyway, I, I see him here tonight and I just think maybe our town's growing on him. So if we have that tendency to do that on people, and I appreciate it. So I'm kind of, <laughs> well, I just, go ahead. I'd just like to say I appreciate your clarity, your, your frankness, your pragmatic approach. Anybody else? Raise your hand. I'll say I'll be the bad guy. You go. <laughs> I, you know, I just, I would like to say I appreciate you very, very much. It's nice that we have an attorney that is um, honest. You're very direct with us. Um, you're always looking out for the best interests of the city, and I appreciate that very much. Um, you come out and you explain things um, in plain English and you're not using legalese all the time. And so I, I like that. And, and you do have a sense of humor, even if the mayor doesn't always agree. Um, and I like, I like that because you work, uh, you work very well with us even when, even when we disagree. And, and you're never condescending to us. You, you know, we get through what we need to get through. Um, but I do appreciate that you look out for the best interests of the city. Thank you. Thank you. And that, that's, that's always my goal is to, to do what, what is in the best interest of the city and, and ultimately to, to be an advice for you. And, you know, like you said, there's going to be times where, you know, there are disagreements and I don't have a, a uh, hubris or a head that, that says no. You have to do what I, what I, what I recommend you do. That's not my job. My job is to give you the information, give you the facts, that you can make the best decisions possible. Thank you. Uh, you're getting a lot of guidance from me. Yes. <laughs> you go next. Sure. Um, I agree with what everybody's been saying, Joe. <laughs> 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 You really have a knack for making things understandable, and we've been through a lot of legal stuff since you've been here. And, you know, I don't have to worry, am I going to go into a executive session and not understand anything that's happening? Because you have a really good way of explaining it. And also, I just have to comment that you are so funny, and I just feel like you fit in with us. And I really appreciate that. And thanks for being here tonight. Well, I 
I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here to be able to come down and, and sort of do these meetings and be here. Okay, I'm glad. Okay. okay, I know you're missing. Um, by the way, I, I agree with everything that was said about you. But, you know, coming from corporate, I have to ask you a question for you to tell us. What do you think you have done, the most substantial thing you have done in your time here that you are proud of? One of your biggest achievements? And how, what also you think, one of the things that you think you could have done and you did not do, you would like to do? I think probably one of the, what will be one of the biggest achievements has been getting through this Hillcrest Department acquisition. That has taken a substantial amount. Of, I think we started talking about this back in uh, February or March uh, of this year on trying to first, the multi-steps, having to negotiate with the, the owners, the, the holders of the deed of trust to try to be able to acquire that deed of trust for, you know, we were able to purchase it for $7,000 uh, because of those negotiations and be able to do that. And then the, the follow-on negotiations with the, uh, you know, the owners of the property and being able to get them to, to see and to understand the benefits of not going down a foreclosure route and being able to do the deed in lieu of foreclosure and being able to get that as a, a, an asset for the city because it's something that the city needs, that property needs to be put back into, into use and circulation, and I see that as a, a, a great future project for the, for the city. Um, so I think that's, you know, I look at that as one of the, the, the bigger accomplishments over the, the time it took, and I think what the ultimate impact will be to the city. And there are things that I, you know, I learn on a daily basis. Uh, one of the things I was, mentioning to Steve this morning that uh, you know that we've been working on for the last few months has been uh, for finalizing a, a tax two tax lien foreclosures on two properties uh, that the city had prior to even me starting had uh, had already acquired the tax liens on these properties and it was the time frame to be able to foreclose had come up so we started that process and I had hoped that you know this last week that we should have been finished with it. Uh, we submitted everything over to the treasurer's office and come to find out that when we served the tax lien foreclosure complaint, my office, we didn't serve the treasurer, the county treasurer, which is a requirement. So I have to go back and fix that. And like I told Steve this morning, uh, that's on me. I'm not charging for, for doing something over again because of a mistake that was made by by my office, you know, I I trust that I've got paralegals and assistants to to help with things, but ultimately the buck stops here. I'm the attorney. I'm responsible for overseeing that. That was an error that I didn't catch, uh, and so I'll be working with the the treasurers. We'll have to find out if if I can request a motion from the court to allow us to uh, have an acknowledgement and waiver of service to address that deficiency, so we don't have to start all over or if we have to start all over we'll we'll get it done and to answer in this way i think you're funny <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way i play <laughs> right, i tried to get the doctor to fix that but he said no and, and thank you for being humble too i appreciate that about you i thank appreciate you. it thank you no. that's that's because of my parents <laughs> <laughs> if, okay in the interest of not letting you get a fat head I'd like to say, keep doing what you do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I, I tell you, it, it, this has been a, a very pleasant surprise. As Merritt mentioned, that, you know, he had concerns at the beginning. I can tell you that when I was approached for this, I had just started with uh, Gus Rosenfeld. As, uh, they brought me in as a, as a partner to take over for Susan Goodwin, who had been a municipal attorney in Arizona for over 40 years. Uh, and you know, the, one of my partners, uh, his, his first was like, "You want to do busy? <laughs> <laughs> you realize where busy is?" And, you know, and I was like, "Oh, everything's remote. Everything's remote. It's not a big deal." You know, but and then you know, trying to make adjustments and changes, and you know, realizing you know, the last couple months as things get back into into 
working that you know no it's important for me to be here on these council days and to be able to adjust my schedule to make sure that you know i can be here then you know in an economy of scale too as well as you know, work with with steve and staff to say okay let's let's schedule things and do things for the tuesday council days so i can be here and we can focus on that and and make that part work as well to be here because you know i enjoy the drive i I do, you know, as you know, I also represent Quartzsite, Miami, and Litchfield Park. I was a prior city attorney up in Page. Uh, I've been all over uh, the state, and, and you know, I think I've, 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 I've found the area of law that I, I truly enjoy doing because it is something unique and different every day. Uh, and not like the first 15 years of my of my practice, which was almost 100% litigation, which I always joke is, you know, it's, I got paid to argue every day. And you, it's hard to stop that arguing when you leave the office. And it's like, you know, when you find yourself arguing with the clerk at the, uh, at the, at the store, then you're like, okay, I here, put that, that, that litigation. You take it home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't let the fact that I'm on my second marriage. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So you, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let Steve wind it up, but but yeah, when you have a city as needy as us, uh, it really no, I mean no, 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 I just I'm kidding. You. That's why we grow one. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't obviously uh, I'm not a decision maker in this process, but um, I, I would like to. Um, perhaps make some comments from staff's perspective um, because, uh, well, for one thing, um, you know, I, I didn't know Joe uh, before he called me one day and said, we need to negotiate a contract with you. And after three grueling minutes of <laughs> negotiation, we had an agreement, which was what uh, you later adopted. Um, you know, I, I've, worked with a lot of city attorneys over the many years and um, even the 16 years or so that I've worked in Arizona, I've worked with several, but uh, 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 several of those attorneys have been from Gus Rosenfeld one way or another. Um, and uh, which, uh, you know, uh, the icon of municipal uh, attorneys, Susan Goodwin, um, was, um, you know, one of the real influencers on a large number of people who uh, ply the trade of municipal law nowadays. And uh, although Joe didn't actually get to work with her, um, he follows in some very, very uh, uh, big footprints. Um, and from my perspective, um, I'm, uh, what I'm seeing after six months of the two of us working together, um, I'm, I'm seeing good things. As you all know, um, uh, I, I've always been a healthy skeptic of city attorneys, and uh, I don't. Uh, I, I I I don't just assume that they're good just because they have a license to practice law. Um, but uh, you know, but I think I like to give them an opportunity to show, um, you know, what kind of job they can do, and particularly when you're contracting for an attorney like we are at the present time. Um, it gives us some flexibility to do some things and make some decisions that would be different uh, than the days when we had John McKinnon or uh, one of the other city attorneys that we had on the staff for better or for worse. Um, I can state unequivocally that although I'm still a skeptic um, and probably always will be, that uh, we have had a, a very good, honest, productive, not always agreeable, but always collegial relationship. Uh, and that's all we can really hope for because when the rubber hits the road, we're all here for one reason and that's to serve the people of Bisbee. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite frankly, it's difficult to find uh, a city attorney who can keep that focus uh, for a length of time. And uh, we were extremely fortunate for all the years that we had John McKinnon here because he was one of us. Um, and, uh, and, and quite frankly, we were disappointed after John retired with what came after that. Um, and so, um, you know, hiring a city attorney is a difficult, difficult choice. 
and uh, uh, you're you're stuck with it for a, a period of contract or a period of a, an agreement, um, and uh, and hope for the best. I'm Joe. I'm really satisfied with the relationship you have with staff, um, and and I'm really satisfied with. Uh, um, where we're going with all of the priorities that council has for us to to implement and uh, uh, let's just say that assuming council will let you come back to work tomorrow uh, <laughs> then I look forward to doing that again for whatever specified period of time we so choose so thank you for your help thank you, thank you. all right oh can I just follow up real quick when when Leslie said that uh, you fit in very well with us that you were one of us I don't know if that was a compliment or not. <laughs> <laughs> we've been called many things. Now. No, we've been called many things. <laughs> yeah. I don't see it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. You don't see that. We're going to collect it. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. What do you got to report tonight, uh, Mr. City Manager? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, just a couple of quick things. Uh, a, a, a reminder, um, the uh, mariachi festival is coming up this weekend. Uh, so all of you who uh, like mariachi or just like to be around mariachi or just like to visit with your friends, uh, it's, uh, it's a full day event over at the Warren Ballpark. If you uh, so choose, I just don't want you to forget uh, that uh, we'll be there. It'll be a good time. I think the mayor will be there. And um, so there'll be a lot of other folks there too, I'm sure. Um, also, I just wanted to report uh, that uh, in accordance with the RFP that has uh, uh, been released for architects for the city building, uh, architectural services, um, we had a pre-proposal meeting um, last Thursday. Um, and we circulated that widely to architects around Southern Arizona. We actually had five architectural firms um, attend the meeting here uh, in, in this room. Um, and the purpose of the meeting, of course, is uh, they have, you know, they, they had the RFPs, they had a week to look at them, and the, the purpose of the meeting was so that they could ask us any questions that came up uh, while they were reviewing the proposal. Uh, so that uh, uh, they would have a better chance to be um, uh, uh, hopefully uh, responsive to uh, what we're what we're looking for. Um, I thought it went very well. Um, I thought there's a lot of really good questions. Everybody that was here participated. Uh, we invited them over to 118 Arizona Street after the meeting. Um, all of them. Uh, followed us over there. Um, they spent a good bit of time um, and were very respectful and stayed out of the dental contractor's way uh, while we were there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mayor got yelled at today, but, but it was his fault. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, it, the poor guy was yelling at him. I was standing there talking to him. He stopped and he yelled, and I said, hold on a second, that's the limit. <laughs> um, Don't cross the yellow line. <laughs> Ken knows what that yellow tape is about now. I um, knew what it was about before, but I never cared about it before. <laughs> but, I, I wore a badge. But anyway, we <laughs> um, so, uh, and I thought that the continuation of the discussion um, over at the city building um, was also very productive. Um, the mayor was over there at the city building with us. Um, um, Doug Taylor and uh, Ashley and I think Matt. Oh, you weren't with us? Not from the. Um, sorry. Um, anyway, at least the three of us were there to answer any questions they had about uh, where we were going with the building, where we were stopping with the building, and what our expectations were uh, moving forward. So um, I was particularly uh, uh, excited to see so many. Uh, now, I don't know that all five of them will actually return a proposal on December 2nd, um, but I'm hopeful. And uh, uh, I mean, that's why we do this, is to try and get a lot of ideas and be able to choose the best one. So uh, next step would be on the 5th, excuse me, the 2nd of December, 
Um, the, uh, they will be due with their proposals, and then we will, of course, compile them and then move forward from there uh, to assist you when making the selection of the architect or who to design the town site. Um, this afternoon, I received a communication from the contractor for ADOT. Um, I, some of you may have seen it already. I, I forwarded that email message to all of you, uh, but I thought this was uh, something the public would be very interested in, in light of events over the last year or so. Uh, the, uh, the tunnel, the Mule Pass Tunnel, um, will undergo uh, significant improvements uh, starting sometime in the summer of 2022, so that's next summer. Uh, what we do know from the communication that we received uh, today from ADOT is that um, they will be, uh, thank God, they'll be putting new lights in there. And hopefully those new lights will actually light the tunnel, uh, which has always been a bone of contention for a very long time. Um, in addition to that, they'll be doing some maintenance and repair on the actual physical tunnel itself. Uh, sealing cracks, uh, cleaning the walls, um, and then they will be doing some pavement maintenance, um, although I suspect it'll still feel like a roller coaster when we're driving through it. Um, but they will also be re, uh, restriping it to a two-lane tunnel as opposed to a three-lane tunnel. So you won't have that, uh, that, that passing lane going west. Uh, and so you'll essentially have the same two lanes you enter and leave the tunnel with, and um, hopefully the, the, uh, the, the, there will be a, a minimum of six foot shoulders on either side between the lane, the lane line and the actual curb in the tunnel. So hopefully that will also be safer, uh, even, even though, you know, I, I, I shudder when I see pedestrians and bicyclists in there, and of course, we're all aware of the fatality that occurred there uh, about a year ago. And uh, uh, so some of those changes are intended to provide safer transportation for whoever is using that tunnel. Um, but uh, since it was built in 1958, I don't know that anything major has ever been done in there. And so um, this, is a, this is a definite uh, uh, a piece of good news. And uh, they will be maintaining traffic. They'll have one lane closed at all times, one lane open at all times. So if you are going uh, west, you might want to uh, choose some alternate alternates uh, to the tunnel. Uh, I happen to live in San Jose, so that's an easy choice for me. But, uh, uh, and, and I think the expectation is, is that it will be under construction for about a year. So they're going to be doing a lot of work in there. And, uh, and, and my only comment to that is, thank God it's about time. And that is it for me tonight, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. And uh, I will entertain a motion. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.